Hello and welcome to the Nish Guarda YouTube podcast series. Once again, here to profile leading personalities and uh, organizations creating new directions and possibilities for the world. All is powered by openbusinesscouncil.org, citiesabc.com, and as well, fashionabc.org, and in the future as well, involved with Sports ABC and um, in the areas of Utopian, which we're going to talk in the future. So um, in this series, we've been always trying to go one step ahead in terms of what is going on in terms of technology, platforms, especially the way we look at the fourth industrial revolution and increasingly about all the areas of metaverse and uh, blockchain related innovation. And that's the reason of the meeting today, which I'm very excited. Uh, where we're going to be highlighting, are we going to be specifically looking at uh, a new platform called Runiverse that I'm very excited to talk today. And uh, I welcome to our series, uh, Gib Cutrino, uh, which is one of the personalities, the COO of Runiverse that is going to be talking about this platform. So a bit of information about Gip uh, Cutrino. So he's an Italian entrepreneur and thought leader specialized in blockchain and gaming. And he's an experienced team leader and the creative marketeer that has been collaborating with leading brands internationally. Um, as the COO of Runiverse, that is a metaverse gaming platform where he leads product development for an immersive and innovative gaming experience using blockchain technology and metaverse 3D ecosystem related technologies. Um, Met Runiverse recently uh, announced a partnership and collaboration with Polygon. That is of course, one of the leading uh, tokens worldwide and, and as well blockchain platforms. Um, and what he's trying to do is creating a lot of different areas that will bring events and opportunities to the gamify community and contributing to growth and adoption of the web three gaming. So uh, Gib Cutrino is a graduate from UCLA um, and the former presenter of the Italian show Lilene and has focused a career as an entrepreneur in the world of mobile gaming in the last eight years. And has been involved in the launch of platforms like Edo SA under the flagship of the Poseidon Group during the initial coin offerings, uh, ICOs, and as well as an influencer and thought leader on blockchain. He has collaborated with popular YouTube personality PewDiePie, which uh, does need too much presentation, and as well has been involved with a lot of crypto gaming projects. He's been as well promoting the potentials of the blockchain technology when it comes to gaming industry and increasing as well all the immersive metaverse networks and of course, social media in general. And among some of the achievements, uh, he, uh, one of the areas that he was um, uh, very involved was Scheme, a platform where users can play their favorite mobile games while mining tokens. Another game that has been involved, App Wallen, that is called um, um, the po Pokemon Go of Crypto, that allows the users to capture tokens and cryptocurrencies while walking around the most important cities in the world. And as well, uh, it's been involved in a lot of areas, specifically how we look at the product and different areas of technology around, especially uh, blockchain, NFTs, metaverse, and gaming. Uh, so welcome to our series, Gip. It's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure, then. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. So, so uh, I love... I, I, I never... I never see this is my first time that I see uh, uh, that somebody talk a lot about me. So I'm very happy about this one. And then when you were talking, say, oh, how many things I did in, during the last year? So I'm very happy to be me. No, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you, you have a very interesting point because you have uh, television, gaming, and of course, blockchain and metaverse uh, um, backgrounds and, and, and very technological as well capacities as well responsible for the product of a, a blockchain uh, metaverse platform. So can you tell us a bit about your background, about Italy, about your education here as well, you're educated in the US. Um, how did you come to the place you are right now? A bit of your background and history. Yeah, it, it, it is very strange well, in my, my, my way because what I like is just to be excited when I do something. So I need and I always search for something new. For that one, I'm, uh, if I can say that I'm a big, big traveler. So I like to move around, to meet new people and to travel around. And so that one drive me. And then early 90s, uh, late 90s to UK, 
uh, what that that years were the years of MTV, the music television, when MTV was burning uh, in uh, New York and so in UK with the MTV Europe. And I met some people over there during, uh, okay, I love to party. So during some parties, and I met uh, the people that call for that period, the VJs, video jockeys. I don't know if you remember that period, but it was very hilarious. So I just for, um, you know, kind of uh, coincidence to start to work for MTV Italy, for music television in Italy. And that was one of the, my best period I ever lived because it was really crazy that period because uh, MTV was the real first network uh, before uh, the before Facebook, before, before Meta, before Instagram, because we were 97, 20, yeah, 97, 98, and 99. And uh, that one, I started uh, um, my journey inside of the Italian television, that program TV shows called Le Iene. It's kind of Reservoir Dogs is a um, TV show. Well, uh, um, the comic part, well, you, I, I used to be in the a, in a comic section, so in the comic segment, so making the latest stuff around Italy. But moreover, Le Iene is talking about uh, um reports around Italy what's wrong about politics uh, about uh, drugs and everything is a very serious mm -hmm. program I, I just take it to part only about the comic part it was a very great experience for me because we were on the street and was before the um, the, the before beta before before uh, Facebook so I I love that period but progressively I say that in 20, 2005 YouTube popped up and after Facebook, it seems like probably 2007, kind of. And so I started that the television was starting to lose its power, you know, lose its interest to the young people. So I was trying to searching around. And in fact, uh, after that one, uh, the, the Facebook uh, and YouTube pop up and they came, you know, they, all the attention from the, um, the young people. So at that point, uh, I tried to search around what's interesting and I tried to use the um, social network to create a business around it. And I started to create uh, the first social network campaigns with uh, Facebook, with the MySpace and that period there was, and so on. But at the beginning, uh, on the first uh, BTC era, when the Bitcoin was used for, uh, you know, the the dark web. Okay, I just smelled that something new was coming up. So I enjoyed this adventure and maybe like, so I'm not say that I, I was a pioneer, but kind of because it was 2015 and I started to explore the crypto space. And uh, finding that period, I was living in Italy and in Switzerland. In Switzerland, in 2018, comes a, a big company is named uh, Poseidon. They do. They start to make the first ICO in Switzerland and uh, Italy and in Europe. And I was very lucky because I was started to uh, have an experience with them. And I had the, the luck. The, you know, I was very lucky because I smelled the first ICOs. And I had a, a couple of uh, um, couple of products where Poseidon were involved. Uh, the first one was uh, S Game. It was uh, um, an application where a lot of different games, mobile games, uh, started to let the people, the players, uh, earn cryptos just playing the games. And that product was very very interesting. And that product. Um, catch the, the attention of David Bizonin. David Bizonin is the brother in arm of uh, PewDiePie. So that was starting the first uh, uh, partnership, uh, you know, with uh, PewDiePie because David. And we did this one, this project uh, together. Unfortunately, it was our first project. Pro project. So, you know, at the beginning was very complicated because uh, you don't have exactly, you know, you have to do this, this, this to be compliance, the KYC and everything it was 2018. So it was a still very gray, the area. And and was the, the product, even if today, after five years, six years, uh, is still fresh that day, that, uh, that product, uh, unfortunately, we were not able to, to pump it. Uh, a lot of that product. So we started with a new product is named the Wallem. 
And Willem is a kind of the one you said before, as kind of a Pokemon Go game, but instead of to go around and to catch Pokemon, uh, you can catch crypto. Crypto connected to other habits, so it's a new way to make your drops. And it was very successful. So we were very, we, we, we did great. So that part uh, brought me to uh, to the crypto and to the gaming. Because David Bisognin was my partner and we're still working together. It's absolutely a game, it's a, it's a player, so it's a game addicted. And we mix it together, the game part with the crypto part. And I strongly believe that the blockchain is perfect for the game world. It's absolutely is a perfect match for that one after we came up with the uh, runiverse, but for, uh, for a different way. Yeah, this is this is my part. I will, I will come up here. So, yeah, and here we so, go. So, so let me touch. So you touched three different things that are very important for the iteration of technology you are. So we, we touched, for instance, your background in television and as well at the time, of course, MP, I remember MTV especially for our generation were very important it was massive uh, it was right now everything that is happening and you mentioned my space and then of course it came all these areas of blockchain and we're talking right now in gaming as well so how do you from the trajectory of technology of course you have quite a lot of experience working in major global platforms from the mtv to television to as well gaming and creating substantial games and you mentioned pdp which is one of the biggest youtubers in the planet I think it's still the biggest or one of the biggest. But uh, how do you see these parts here and that from this experience, because you've been an entrepreneur, you've been a thought leader, you've been an influencer. How do you see this experience, especially from an experience perspective on the technology development and where are we are right now? So how do you see this tra trajectory and some, I don't know if you want to highlight something and probably how did you come back to or or after this, how did you decide to create the universe and how do you put that expertise on the universe? Yeah, so it's exactly what you say. This is a journey. So our life is a journey. Start baby and we grow and so on. So our life is a journey and even the technology is a journey. So, and the journey has only one direction, right? So you need to work hard. You need to go straight and technology make like this. You can see with what's going on with the AI at the moment. So we are going definitely straight. So. I like just to make, if you even you feel just to make a good steps today, probably you need to, you know, watch around and see what's going on and make new steps. And AI is exactly what's going on on the on this. This is the trend of 23, 24. But uh, Runibus is, um, is not talking about AI. Of course, it's talking about the gaming and blockchain. Runibus was born because... Uh, uh, my boy, I have a son, now he's, he's 16, but uh, he's very attractive and I'm listing the young people because they, the kids, you know, they have a, a different point of view of us. And, 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 and I, I, I always told to my boy and I always say to my boy, you have teached more things to me than the things that I have teached to you. Always to say that one, because it's true. So we need to learn to uh, to learn from them because they are what teacher they they understand the world is the, the world is going on in, in one direction and they are going that direction so we need to follow them so Ranimus was born because he trying to discover how the uh trading works so i tried to open the, my my phone and try to go open to bit phoenix is just the exchange bit phoenix and try to say hey, what's going on what this uh red button the sell button and <laughs> The buy button, the green one. So it was watching the colors, right? red and, and green. So because it wasn't able to, to read everything, to understand everything. So just trying to understand, to explain, or say you can see the price goes up. So if the price goes up, you need to push the, the sell button. If the price goes down, you need to push the, the, the green button. Buy. Well, it's so complicated. Why you can make something like, uh, and this is the idea, or from him, why you make like, instead of to make like this, you know, the candles make like this. And it's time to make candles. Why don't make just like people that are running fast if the price goes good and running slow if the price goes bad down. And so that was pop up the idea because that's perfect. I mean, this is a game, but this, this is a finance game that's perfect. So just to drive people to make the 
uh, trading more funny. But on top of this, if you make by yourself, uh, you feel you know the sensation of loneliness. So why don't make against somebody else? In short, so on 30 seconds, I can say that, for example, BTC makes uh, better than uh, Ethereum during the next 30 seconds, even if the market uh, is uh, a, a pure market, never mind. So who's going to lose less or who's going to uh, win more? So the people, the, the BTC and Ethereum now become to runners, to players, to skins. They are running in this track and their speed depends from the performance of Bitcoin and Ethereum during the 30 seconds. At the end, if, for example, I put on the plate $10 and you put on $10 on, on it, who's going to make bad, bad, uh, the, best, the best performance in 30 seconds? Grab the pot. So this is uh, the way our uh, running will pop up. And uh, of course, there's a lot of uh, things uh, inside. So for example, they are not only runners, but they are NFT and they are running on a track and this track is an NFT. So everything is a completely, the five games is completely decentralized. So the owners of the game, and this is a very important thing, that there's no owner of the game. The game is owned by the owner of the NFTs because the NFTs are the different element of the game. The track is an NFT, the run is an NFT, the token chooses is an NFT, the winning, uh, when they, for example, at the end of the run, if my skin or my character uh, won, it's going to make a dance. If I own a specific uh, NFT, I can have my own personal dance. You remember the game um, Fortnite? The trend of Fortnite, this game for PS5, PS4, it was like just the people that they have like this kind of dance. So the people purchase these dances, the particular dance to make at the end where they have to make a kill, the shot, the win, blah, blah, blah. And it's exactly the same, but translated on NFT space. So if I own that specific NFT for a dance, I can have a only dance. For example, like the, I can see the Bitcoin as it make a, like a Macarena dance. And only mine can make like this. Maybe yours can make a different dance and so on. So we are just at the beginning of, of the journey and uh, it's over one year that we are working on it, but we are in launching during these days. Fantastic. And I think this is really an important area. So you touched a couple of things before we go to Universe uh, more because I have a lot of questions on the platform and I know that you're still starting, but you touched the importance of, uh, especially your son, you and I, I learned as well a lot with my son, with my children, because my son and my daughter, especially my daughter, my daughter, my son is is nineteen, and my daughter ten. And one of the things I realized is that even between the two ages, there's already a big difference because the way they interact with technology, uh, and the way they interact, especially if you're nine or ten. So, like you said, there's this part of integration of, uh, and especially AI is going to be especially ChatGPT because ChatGPT is a gamification perspective as well because there's an interaction between you on the chat and of course he's answering to you but he's interacting with you there's some kind of mechanics of rewarding because depending on your prompt you're going to get results so in, in construction of Runiverse and as well with your experience in gaming um, how do you see the mechanics of gaming because one of the challenges we have right now is is and it's going to be a, a serious part is is the first of all the risks that are coming out of this because most of people are still confused what is going to happen out of this, what is going to be um, happening in the sense of uh, the interactions. But the the, num the and this is a big question, sorry, but I, I, I buried me uh, for a while. So at the moment, uh, let's just look at numbers. Okay, there's around, and this is official numbers. Okay, the numbers are, they speak for themselves, but we're talking about, when you talk about uh, active people playing, we're talking about 3 billion people worldwide playing games every day. Uh, and uh, and when we talk about the internet, it's around 4 to 5 billion people. So that means most of the people on the internet are playing games. Um, so, and then, like you said, we have the other paradox that is the, the financial models that are right now very complex. Um, that is, for instance, you mentioned blockchain and crypto. But at the end of the day, from the world population around only 300 million, 350 million people have some kind of access to crypto. So that means there's still 
7 billion people to bring to the to the journey. Um, and at the same time, the financial models right now is that if you look at the, the average salaries are very small worldwide. I think probably the, the countries with the minimum wage and this data from 2023, the, the top wage around the world of minimum wage is around $2,000, $3,000. So we have all these paradoxes, but in the end of the day, whatever you are, someone in Philippines or someone in Italy or in Los Angeles, you are somehow sharing the same UI UX platforms. And effectively, we're getting more and more into uh, platforms like what you guys are building with Runiverse. So what you're trying to do is precisely a game that solves some of these problems. So can you tell us the vision within this context? context of the big picture and i know this is a much bigger picture that is not what you guys you guys are not trying to solve the world economy no one can solve it but how do you see your hat as an entrepreneur your hat as a product and your hat as well as a father and as a, a, a social person and your own self no, that that is a you, you catch the point uh, perfectly just let me let me say this when we are coming back to our uh, children uh, and when we were a child i mean when we were children so Everything that we have learned when we were children, we learned it using the game, playing. You know, at the beginning, when you have one year old, you just play with this one before to understand this is a glass to drink something. So you need to play that one. When you need to learn to count the numbers, for example, you play with the color stuff that you break one, two, you play with the with the, with the pencil, with the colors, everything you learn, you learn just by playing. Everything we have learned, just playing. So gaming and playing is the best way to learn everything, everything. So at this point, we forgot, we have, we have got this one. So now to learn, we need to study. We consider that we need to study, we need to make, you know, but Gaming, playing uh, is the best way to learn in every way. So if your game, if your work uh, start to be a game and you have fun doing that one, that is the best way to learn. So my my consideration about this one is exactly what you have seen before about the numbers. The numbers of people now that are on internet, billions and billions, the numbers that are playing games, they are million, billions, and the number that are in crypto space are millions. So how, which is the best way to drive them and why to drive them? Because the game. So if we let them play and have fun during this, they are going to learn this one. That is exactly what we have said before with my boy. So he transformed something, a, a boring lesson lesson of trading made on Bitfinex or on Coinbase or whatever in, in a game. So that is to drive people. So I, mean, I can't say that is, this is our mission, of course, but this is our ferruge behind the product that we do because we would like just to mix crypto and gaming because gaming is the best way to learn. Of course, Runivis is a, a tool for crypto space, for crypto players, because you can uh, put your tokens inside. That is a new way to make your drops. It's a new way to uh, create engagement of different communities. For example, but this one, if you want, we can uh, talk later about this one. Well, we are now creating a strong partnership with uh, uh, class A players on crypto space like uh, a Polygon, Alchemy, Chainlink. So we are uh, create partnership with this one to create a specific tournament inside of, of uh, Runivas. So all the um, the people that the the, the community around uh, Matic around Polygon can be will be able to um, you know to to there are different communities playing that one and challenging them inside of Runivas using different tokens. So the Mati community will, for example, uh, challenge the Lynx community so they can play with different tokens. And so let's see who's gonna be the winner at the end of the day or the week. And we put some prizes at the end of the tournament and so on. And as we have said before, the difference between kids and us that when there's something new is coming out like uh, ChatGPT, an example is perfect in Italy because as you know, ChatGPT, it was banned in Italy since a few weeks ago. 
So why? Because the adults, we see uh, the dangers that could be in the innovation. The children and the young people, they see the opportunity in the innovation. So this is the main difference. We need to change how to see things. We need to remind ourselves and what we thought that at the innovation when we were young. And so for this one, the kids are really important. And how we try that one. So we, we can say that Runiverse is the, you know, the, the changer, of course, uh, it's just uh, uh, a piece of the puzzle, but every big puzzle need all the pieces. So we are just uh, a piece of the, a huge puzzle. And uh, we, we, what we are doing is just to create this partnership with uh, this brand set to make uh, our presence more important as possible because we trust in it. That's it. And we integrate it. So of course, uh, even we are integrated, we are creating, uh, uh, now we are working on Polygon, on Polygon chain because we are, we are partnering with them, but we are integrated the cross chain side. So the people, from BSC will be able to uh, challenge uh, other players uh, on uh, Polygon chain on on ERC20, even if the cost now is very high about ERC20, still high, but layer two, of course, are, are more uh, perfect for the gaming because the speed and because the, the cost of the, of the gas. But what we are doing just to create a different uh, chain and make the game cross chain. So you don't have to exit from a game to another one. So the Runiverse BSC version against the Runiverse B Polygon version, but the player doesn't understand on which chain is. So if I'm on BSC, that's perfect. I can play on BSC, but I'm playing again uh, against a player that maybe is playing on Polygon. And I don't know because they just see the front end. So the point what we would like just to reach and make more easy as, as possible the front end, what the people see. So the engine behind that is, of course, is extremely important because it must be fast and the blockchain, unfortunately, still sometimes doesn't have this, the PX is not exactly extremely always fast and the, uh, the performance must, mm -hmm. must be, you know, extremely uh, polished, uh, smooth because the people are, are used, are, um, you know, they play with, PS5, we play with Xbox, everything is quick, everything is fast. So they need this in the games, but the games on poly on, on blockchain is not so fast. But we are working on it. So the technology is growing and we're going. So you you touch some of the the key elements how you're trying to build the uh, Runiverse and the differentiators. So for people that never heard, and we went with big questions, let's go right now to the practicalities. So for for I mentioned a bit, but what is Runiverse? and what it matters, and what's the stage of development, steps, and what you want to achieve with it. Okay, so Runiverse is just a, a game, at the moment, uh, a desktop game, and uh, where people can uh, play, choose a token and play against other people that have choose a different token in a, a price prediction of 30 seconds. Who's gonna make the, the right prediction is gonna win the part. So that this is at the moment uh, Runiverse. So we are going to publish a, a mobile version. The mobile version is extremely important because it uh, allowed people to have more adoption of the game because uh, we know every one of us, we have the extension of our right or left hands with this on top, always. Okay. Oh, I can really, you can see. I can, I can put this one. So mobile works, okay. <laughs> and <laughs> so we have this uh, mobile version uh, in a uh, lineup. And on top of this, uh, we have uh, uh, we work a lot on the um, on the IT front end. We work a lot on the front end because we take care a lot about the experience of the user experience uh, during uh, the gameplay. And uh, we have closed a lot of deals with big players. We have said before uh, Polygon, Alchemy, and Chainlink. And uh, if I can say, it will be very soon a tournament, official tournament, our first official tournament with Polygon. And uh, can I say the date? Can I say the date? Make like this. Yeah, thank you. It will be May 26. Let me see. May 26. Yes, May 26, the first uh, Polygon tournament. And qualification are running right now. And uh, well, where we want to go? 
uh, we want to go just to make uh, uh, the cross chain between different chain. At the moment, it works only on Polygon. We want to improve uh, all uh, the um, the possibility to the users because at the moment uh, every piece of the of the game is an NFT. So as owner of this NFT, I just can earn tokens and money and uh, and coin <clears throat> and coins based on uh, the um, intensification of the play with that specific uh, piece of the game. Let me make a let me be more clear. So there's no ownership behind Runivers. So everything is made by NFT. Let's assume now that I own a skin, PTC, for example. So every time a player choose BTC as token to play in Runivers, the 90% of, the, of the, um, the BTC used for that specific play goes to the winner of the run, but the 10% goes to the owners of the three different NFTs used during the gameplay, because every run involves three different NFTs. NFTs of runner A, NFTs, NFT of runner B, and NFT of the truck. So every time I choose BTC, I just pay a fee to the owner of the BTC skin. Okay, and I pay a fee to the owner of the track where my BTC run. Same for the other skin. If I play, for example, BTC against uh, uh, Matic, so the owner, the three different owners is the owner of Matic, the owner of BTC, and the owner of the track where we run. So these people are the real owner of the war game. So now the only um, benefit to own an NFT of Runiverse is, of course, is financial because at the moment I can just grab a part of the of the of the of the parts on the in the I just earn profit, but I can interact with the game. So what we are good to go doing right now is just to create a form where you can work on the NFT that you have. For example, if you own the uh, skin of uh, the Bitcoin, at the moment the later we can see the, the NFT, how it looks like uh, BTC inside of Runiverse is a old man with white ears so over there, but I can change only like that. So I can make a different skin, I can change it, the color of the eyes, I can make it younger, I can make like a dino, I can make like a crocodile, I can make whatever I want because I own that one but it's still running. So if I change the look like uh, about uh, this uh, skin inside of Runiverse, uh, instead of to have uh, old people, old man that is running, I can have, for example, like a dog or whatever. Same for the truck. As owner of the truck is exactly like Sandbox. Uh, if I own a truck or, or a piece of land on Sandbox, I can build whatever I want. It's exactly like the moment. At the moment, we have uh, 1,000 different trucks uh, in Runiverse. Everyone is... Uh, uh, single, only one, everyone is uh, uh, different from the other. We uh, are giving those uh, NFTs, those track uh, already pre-built, but as owner of this NFT, soon will be possible to change the look like. So for example, I can make just like a sponsor inside of my track. So when I can see that people are running, I can see a sponsor inside of the game. And the, the possibilities are unlimited on this way. So we are working on this, just to let the people just not be player of a, a game built by somebody else, but play this game and rebuild and change the look like. So the functionalities will be the same, but the look and feel about a game will be made progressively by the users, by the owners of these NFTs, of course. So you can be holders and play and be part of the game, just changing the look and feel, uh, uh, taking the revenues, or just uh, play the game, so that's it, is, is enough to play the game. And I, I want to challenge you later in a game, you know, run. No, oh, fantastic. And it's, it's, I, I hope that you guys can make this really big success because one of the challenges we have right now is precisely how we can bring gaming to the NFT world and to the blockchain world, but as well making it simple, like you said, something that is easy for people to understand. I think that's the biggest challenge with the adoption of Web 3.0 technology. So how do you how are you taking it to market? So you touch about a lot of different things. I know that you have a huge um, network as well. 
but are you and of course polygon is it's it's a big community themselves so are you taking this through the conventional angles of crypto and of course right now we are in a crypto winter that is getting out in in, in spring and uh, so just a bit of the roadmap that you guys are working right now Okay, so about to go to the market, we have different pl plans. So of course, uh, we are looking about the, the market. So we I'm feeling you know the smell of the spring so right now. So it's uh, my impression, it's my own personal impression. We are on the way to the end of this uh, spring uh, spring moment for the crypto spring. Uh, but uh, we go to the market uh, uh, creating this tournament with a specific community. The first one, as I said before, is with Polygon, May 26th. And so uh, runners will be introduced uh, to the Polygon community and uh, they will be invited uh, to join uh, this uh, this tournament uh, uh, where you can see exactly all the logos uh, and the all the the game the, the game experience uh, is yeah. built on uh, on Polygon with logos and everything and with other partners that will be we don't have yet the data but with Alchemy and Chainlink will be the next and of course, we make uh, uh, activity with influencers because at the moment uh, we have an interesting network of influencers uh, involved uh, as uh, friends, uh, I can say family and friends uh, in in the game. In I mean in the in the team, but of course, uh, most of the influencers at the moment about gaming sometimes they don't like to to talk about crypto games. So they make a lot. There's still a lot of. Uh, difference between web two and web three games. But this is uh this is part of the game. So we are introducing them to understand to exactly to promote that one, not just not only because of promotion, but because it's fun. So we we are giving the game just to try that one, consider that if you like it, if you don't like it. That's an example now we have did um a toggle that you can switch from web three to web two. So if you want you can play Runiverse in Web2. Of course, you need to log in, in via MetaMask. But if you want, you can play top completely for free, switching the log in a, in a Web2 version. You can there are other people. You don't pay nothing, you don't, but you have you leave the experience. And that is perfect because uh, you know, dri you drive the regular people, the Web2 players uh, to this world. So um, this is a, this is the way that we are approaching the market, and of course, uh, we'll push a strong one day, and will be very soon. When the market, uh, we're waiting for the summer for the crypto summer. It will be very very soon, definitely soon. So we're waiting for it. And Dennis, I have a surprise for you. So if you, we should have our CEO David Bisoni, the brother-in-law of PDFI online. He should be. He is in Japan right now. He's traveling all around the world, and he should be here with uh, his wife and his daughter. Let me see if we can connect with him. Hey, Hi, 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 David. Hi. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> We, we can hear you a lot because here is a lot of noise, but uh, we are traveling uh, all the world. Now we are uh, in uh, Japan, thanks to having us here. So if you want, you can follow us in Instagram. And Lumen will say hi. 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 <laughs> By the way, Runiverse is a great project. I know it uh, really well. So, guys, follow us uh, and play Runiverse. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank Bye, you, Roman. Enjoy your trip. Bye. Enjoy Thank your you. travel. Bye -bye. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> Um, in terms of Runiverse, uh, you mentioned the roadmap and how it works. So, how do you see it right now, especially the 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 challenge in adoption of NFTs and the metaverse technology? Because, of course, metaverse technology does a lot of things, from digital twin technology to a lot of different things, not just AR, VR, but especially in, in AR. There's a lot of things that are becoming mainstream. But NFTs has been having a challenge. To become as mainstream as metaverse or other things and even on all the blockchain there's still a lot of work to do on the blockchain technology that's mass adoption so in a gaming like yours um how do you 
intend to work? You mentioned the relationship with influencers, but as well the go-to-market strategy. So you, that's Polygon, different things, but quick wins besides the analysis that you're doing. And when can people start really testing the game and going more uh, on the day-to-day -day uses of the technology? So, of course, the the improvement or the scalability of the project must uh, uh, is exactly one uh, mantra that uh, everyone that makes a game should think before to go to the market because that is extremely important. And Runivers is thought because is 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 thought on this because you can play by yourself, you know, in a kind of achievement mode, a kind of story mode, or you can invite send an invitation to your friend or a random mode where you can there challenge everyone in the world. Uh, um, my, my opinion, the user the user friendly interface is something that uh, uh, need to be very accurate in a project in a product to attract more people on uh, on it and uh, in the, the integration with the main platform of course uh, this one uh, it's uh, an, an important thing uh, that create uh, adoption nft you know usually a glory era couple of years ago, the NFTs, so now a lot of people, uh, you know, they own NFTs, but over um, glory um, project like Axie Infinities uh, or other projects like that, that uh, were very famous, Axie Infinity was in the Philippines, uh, if, I don't remind, if I remind well, but it was like an explosion in the Philippines. Other main projects like Sandbox and the Central End and other, and, and many others, you know, we, they crossing metaverse using uh, nfts in the metaverse and gaming uh, that were uh very uh popular during the last years now they need to propose something new you know because owning an nft and just to think only that owner because because i'm an owner an nft owner it's an after is not exactly what the, is uh the nft made for so nft has a meaning you know, you can create something, you need to build something, you need to use that for something else. And the, I strongly believe in just do not create uh, competitors in metaverses and in NFT world. But just uh, let's assume, and this is a very old story about, let's assume that I have an NFT with a skin, with a character that I can use in different platform. Okay, so I can use this NFT in Runiverse, I can use this one in Sandbox, I can use this one in the center line, I can use this one in uh, Axie Infinity. At the moment, it's not like this. If I have a, like a gun or a flower or whatever, I can use this flower only in my own metaverse, uh, only in my own games. So what we would like just to create is just like bridges between metaverses and bridges between different games that use NFT technology. Uh, but this one, if you check uh, on the um, roadmap of uh, of Runiverse, uh, it's just that we are working to create uh, the possibility to have uh, different NFTs from different uh, um, metaverses where the people run and they run starting from Sandbox, for example, they go to Star Atlas, uh, so back to the center and the back in Runiverse itself. Because the run, you can cross different metaverses. So what we are doing is just cross chain and cross metaverses. Because we would like just to do not create competitors in the crypto worlds, but we would like just to be a tool for people and a bridge for uh, products. So we would like to just uh, go to the market and let them, the people understand that we are not all another game or another competitor. But we are here just to create bridges. We would like just to be part of the cloud, just to connect uh, different realities. For this one, we have an open conversation right now with the uh, most important metaverses just to create, uh, try to understand exactly how to connect because even they use it. Sometimes same technology, sometimes a little bit different. So we have even a, an IT barrier. So we need, because Sandbox was born several years ago, several years ago. So. You know, and, and more metaverses are they using the technology more new, so it's not exactly easy. But that, my opinion, that is the way. That is the road. Just to create, you know, um, a circle where all people just to collaborate. That one could be a way to create a more 
adoption about uh, crypto metaverses and NFT technologies and so on. Definitely, yes. My opinion. No, thank you. And then this really, I think, what is necessary right now. So we 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 talk about the couple of journeys. So for people that want to um, trade, get into the game. What would be the advice you have actually on on your Instagram page on your uh, on your website? There's a lot of cool NFT related parts of the game that uh, we're going to put uh, as well uh, here for people listening to us. Any areas that you would highlight for people that uh, want to get into this, like a uh, last uh, appeal for people in the audience that are really want to test Runiverse and get into this? Yeah, so now to test Runiverse, it's, it's it's very easy. Just go to runiverse.org. There's a, a button where you can say play now, and you can just connect with your MetaMask. The, the sign up is extremely easy. Just uh, a MetaMask. If someone wants, you can connect with uh, Discord just to be uh, more uh, updated about the project and their email. So the sign up is very easy. Once inside, uh, if someone wants to play Runiverse, they just for fun, just to test that one, goes on setting and set the uh, test mode. So on top of right, just switch off the real mode and can play for fun. So without paying nothing. If someone wants to play with a specific game, with a real game, just to switch on real mode, and you can play. They can play with the with a coin, with the tokens that they have on their MetaMask. For example, I can't play with the WBTC, WBTC if I haven't WBTC on my MetaMask. So I need to own WBTC to play the game against another token. Otherwise, we have created a token. His name is Rani. At the moment, is listed on uh, uh, on. What is it listed? It's on Uniswap, sorry. And uh, with Rani, having Rani in uh, is in uh, own MetaMask, you can play with it's kind of jolly token. So you can play with every tokens, WBTC. So we swap directly, Rani with WBTC, Rani with Ethereum, Rani with Matic. So every player can choose every token to play having Rani. And that this is the very easy to understand. So the experience is very flow. So my my own opinion is just if someone enter with few run inside, that is more easy because the experience is very extremely quick. You don't need to swap. Uh, I would like to play with mana, with sand. I need to swap USDT for mana, blah, blah, blah. And of course, uh, being on Polygon chain, you need to have some W-matic, some matic uh, on your MetaMask, of course, to pay the gas fee. Uh, but I think uh, we have some equal tests with one mat, you can place uh, more than 1,000 grants, so it's okay. And uh, to stay connected, of course, we have our channels. We have our channels on Telegram, on Discord. You can find everything on uh, runners.org. And uh, every suggestion, I would like just to say that every suggestion, we have a, a small community right now. We are grow, we'll start to grow with uh, this partnership with Polygon, but every suggestion is extremely welcome. So this is uh, not exactly an open source code, but it's an open source team. So if someone have anything, just deep suggestions, extremely welcome. And any collaboration is extremely welcome. We are here to create a collaboration with everyone. Do you have a partner? Do you have a project? Do you have a token? You are extremely welcome. Jump in the board, jump on board, and let's run together. Definitely, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. So, well, I, I wish you all the success for the project. Uh, um, and this is really an impressive, uh, ambitious project that wants to coordinate a lot of different things. And we'll put all the links and all the different things. And uh, good luck. And uh, hopefully we can talk in the near future when it becomes really a mainstream game that can actually uh, help a lot of people have fun, but as well learn and uh, and trade better. Thank you so much. Thanks to, have, uh, to having us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you much, so much. Really. Okay.